course, Yellow Chef. Yeah, and yeah, that and was, that was that the battle for second, second in the Pro Am class, 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 John, because John, remember, John, I just mentioned. Car, 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 car. That is that, is. Not be surprised. Correct myself, the safety vehicle Correct came. Myself. In fairness, I should know better. In fairness. This is going to take a long time to sort out. 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 Safety car is taking the full field into the pit lane, where they will park up in the acceleration lane and then stand still. Well, we've got a moment to talk about this, John, because the paddock will be getting a little bit quieter at this point in time. If you are out and about and coming to this weekend to enjoy the Deluxe Porsche Carrera Cup North America's first weekend teaming up with NASCAR, we welcome everyone into our paddock. That's the way IMSA works. It's the wise words of the late Dr. Don Panos. This is for the fans. So if you want to get up close to the stars and the cars, please come by and say hi after this race. We do have another race going on tomorrow as well, but that is a luxury afforded to IMSA fans that I know is not something standard in every series. So come on by, say hello. Absolutely right. Uh, the paddock is a great place to now be respectful, of course, uh, and make sure that when the teams are working, that uh, 
you give them a bit of space to do so but you know go and have a look go and say hello and see how they're working on these 992 porsche carrera cup cars these will be the fastest cars this weekend in terms of lap times around the circuit we've got 30 minutes to go now interestingly although we've got a red flag the clock has not stopped counting down which... I think that has to do with what comes up after us, John, and okay. the necessity to squeeze in all of the events of today's running. For example, none of the cars with other tire manufacturers have even been out on the circuit yet this weekend. So it's been all about Michelin, and that's really been the focus. So tomorrow when we come back for the race, we're going to have a lot of different compounds because the Xfinity series will have been out as well. So that will be a big change for all of our competitors to try and adapt to that. But for now, we've got to leave time for everyone else to get a fair chance at the 4.048 miles of road america right let's just take a, a little bit of a break and give ourselves a breath and then i'll run down the the positions for you how they stand at the end of two racing laps So it is Riley Dickinson who leads in this red flag with Alex Sedgwick in second. That's Kelly Moss and the number 53, the white green car from the number 98 in second. And then it's Will Martin in third for the second of the JDX racing cars. Tom Sargent for McElroy Racing is in third in the number 17. Then Dan Clark, and it is, by the way, that Dan Clark, the one who used to do IndyCar. Yeah, him, Speedy. And he's back <laughs> with us here in Porsche Deluxe Carrera Cup North America. Then Michael Cooper in the 33 for accelerating performance. Kelly Moss in seventh. Jimmy Libre in third. Uh, sorry, in eighth position for the 74. Ryan Yardley in ninth. And Tom Merrill. Uh, Lee uh, is in 10th position for Nola Sport. In Pro-Am, it's Efren Castro who leads. He's down in 15th position for Kelly Moss. In Am, it's Scott Noble who's held on to his pole position uh, lead in, uh, in the Am category. Should just mention, by the way, um, that the cars are identical for the three different categories. It is only the drivers that decide the classes. Shea Adam is with me, John Hindoff, in the IMSA Global Broadcast Centre, and <laughs> uh, we are under red flag, but the uh, th this is going to take a very long... We, we might not get restarted here. We might, we might not. not. Get, yeah. <laughs> and in which case, uh, we've got fastest lap set by Riley Dickinson, Efren Castro, and John Getz. Now, why do I mention that? Because there's a bonus point for the fastest lap of every race. And we talked about it a little at the beginning. Championship points make a big difference, especially at this stage of the season. We are just beyond the halfway point. This is round nine of hmm, 16. Yes. So we've got quite a few more to go. <laughs> Sorry, I had to count there. You could hear my, I, my I brain hear, spitting. Yes, I could, <laughs> hear, I could hear the cogs whirring there, Shane Wilson. Yep. But, but the uh, the interesting thing about that is you get one point for setting the fast lap, so that works towards people's championships. John Getz, who is currently in third in the AM, trying to chase down both Scott Noble and Mark Vame, more importantly, taking that point away from Scott Noble and Mark Vame. But we look at the remainder of the championship, Riley would be having a perfect day if it were to not resume. Mm. You win the race, you get the pole position, which is two points, and you get the fast lap, which is another point, and... No one can better their lap time from qualifying, meaning that Riley would get the two points from pole position for tomorrow's race as well. It's a very interesting dynamic that we could see come into play here. So the clock continues to count down. We started with 40 minutes to go. Two races this weekend. And the Deluxe, Porsche Deluxe Carrera Cup North America is in the pit lane the there are there is a, allowed one member of each team to uh potter across 
to the acceleration lane and to speak to the drivers, uh, put an umbrella over the top so that they're not uh, having to worry about the heat. Good afternoon to you all, those of you who are at Road America at the moment. Not entirely certain whether we're actually being heard on the PA at North uh, at uh, Road America at the moment, but it is one of the places we'll be there next week, actually, for the full IMSA weekend. <laughs> and I love to go there to uh, Road America because the food concessionaires are absolutely phenomenal, all tied up to local charities. Uh, the there are now listen. If you're in another circuit that we go to, and we don't go to that many now with IMSA because we do so much remote, like our NBC colleagues, then um, I apologise, but I've got to tell you, Road America is a pretty high standard. That's what you've got to aspire to if you <laughs> are a concessionaire as far as the food's concerned. And it all goes to local uh, all goes to uh, local charities as well, which is fantastic. Um, now... Here's the menu, which is great. <laughs> um, sodas, good. But, uh, you know, the iced coffee is not to be missed, John. No, iced coffee's always good. I, I do yep. like a good breakfast in a box, which is fantastic. They're, um, Scrambled eggs, bacon, hash browns, all good. What about a quarter pound Johnsonville brat or a barbecue pulled pork sandwich? And how can you go past a Sheboygan Double brat, fantastic, absolutely <laughs> great. And if you know, if you don't eat, if you don't eat animals, the golden veggie burger, the garden veggie burger, it's all there. And if you really want to look after the full team, then <laughs> roasted chicken, not just roasted chicken. How about a twenty-four piece bucket? It's huge. You could not manage that on your own. You need to bring people with you. Get that as well. Absolutely fantastic, and all that money goes back into uh, into local charities. And obviously, for everything, you need to add cheese because Cher, of course it's a Wisconsin staple, is it not? Oh, it's the best when you fly out of Milwaukee the day after the race, and the the concession stands are open in the airport, and you can just load up on cheese. It's cheese. the best feeling in the world. <laughs> Can't wait to be there from next Tuesday afternoon. We're in the Global Broadcast Centre at the moment, remote from uh, the action, but still enjoying it and just can't wait to get there and start enjoying what is going on this weekend. Huge weekend for NASCAR with Xfinity there this weekend in the Porsche Deluxe Carrera Cup. 22 minutes and counting. Shea Adam, as far let's... Let's bring everybody at the track and further afield up to date with what's been going on uh, this season. Riley Dickinson for Kelly Moss has taken hold of this championship. He had a really good year last year and probably in any other year, he might have had a good chance of the championship, but didn't work for him. He's come back stronger. He's Kelly Moss. They know how to win championships. And he comes into this weekend. He's got a pretty decent championship lead. He really does. Will Martin, who sits third in points, is the only other driver on the field with more than one win. Jason Hart taking one win at Road America. Will getting it done on the streets of Long Beach and then the other race at Watkins Glen. So he has started to stage a comeback, but it's Alex Sedgwick who has had a lot of promise coming into this weekend has yet to see the second step of the podium made it to the third and then of course we've had tom Sargent, this young australian kid who has come over to porsche career cup north america and has really made a mark because through the first he finished second every single time mm. now since then it was one seventeenth place finish, but he's gotten back into the swing of things, a third place and a fourth place. So another fourth place finish keeps Tom firmly in the argument for second in this championship. Riley, though, stretching his advantage if he manages to hold on and get another one of these victories that he, he's gotten so used to gathering them. John, it's a little bit like berries. <laughs> the, um, yes, uh, at the moment, here is the, 
the UK, it is uh, it is nesting season uh, for <laughs> for the birds, and they're all uh, collecting berries uh, at the moment. Now, as far as pro, that was as far as pro is concerned. What about pro? Yes. Um, Efren Castro is leading that at the moment. Pro Am has been simply put awesome as far as this year is concerned. Uh, Jeff Mosing took both of the victories at Watkins Glen. Moise Uretsky, newcomer to the championship, took the first win of the season, but Efren Castro got both wins in Miami. That really vaulted him back on the championship argument. Marco Cironi is another guy who's won more championships as far as GT3 Cup Challenge is concerned, I'm fairly sure, in Canada than anyone else won while that series was ongoing. He has one win so far as well. So it's been a lot of variety, but the consistency that we have seen out of Efren Castro is part of the reason and why he has so many points and such a good hold on this championship. But I say that when you've got the guy with more championships, i.e. Marco Cironi, chasing you, you can't sit back on your laurels. And the Dominican Republican driver knows that. That's why Efren's been pushing so hard week in and week out. And we saw the fruit of his labor brought to the center of attention through qualifying, John, when he out-qualified pro cars between himself and the next in Pro-Am class. And it... In the AM category at the moment, Scott Noble ahead of Mark Kvame. That's a bit of a headline right there. <laughs> it is. I think that's only happened once so far this year, uh, being the first race of the season at Sebring. That was Scott's only win. Mark Kvame comes into this championship very much the man to beat in the AM category. He took the championship last year. Very impressive style. And so far this year, he's only not won two races. That one that I mentioned that Scott Noble was victorious in. And then the first round at Watkins Glen, uh, that went the way of John Getz, who sits third in the championship standings. So it's still, once again, Mark Flame's uh, championship to maintain the lead of. But Scott Noble isn't just rolling over. So that's how it stands at the moment. It is Riley Dickinson who sits in the acceleration lane of the pit lane for Kelly Moss uh, by uh, Kelly Moss Racing, who leads from Alex Sedgwick for JDX. His teammate Will Martin is in third. Tom Sargent for McElroy Racing, the Australian, uh, uh, you know, really proficient Australian team in fourth position. They know exactly uh, what they're need to do they've been very impressive down under then it's nola sports dan carper michael cooper uh, uh, dan clark michael cooper for accelerating performance michael mccarthy jimmy libra uh, ryan yardy and tom merrill in the meantime at the circuit plenty of uh, action going on on the briggs and stratton <laughs> motorplex i have very happy memories of racing timo bernard and joe bradley around that circuit the full track there's a story to be told there about cutting the chicane at the top of the hill but we'll leave that for another <laughs> time which completely blew timo bernard's mind he actually couldn't handle joe bradley staying with him the fact that i was making time on them every lap but i didn't tell him i was cutting the chicane at the top of the hill um so, you know because you can't if nobody's telling you you can't track limits no i'm not sure not sure. Next weekend, of course, we'll be here at Road America for a chock full IMSA program. Hope you can join us for that live in sound and vision on IMSA Radio and IMSA TV, including the WeatherTech Sports Car Championship and the Michelin Pilot Challenge. Can't wait to be on site with you all to enjoy that. Still waiting for the track to be cleared up at the moment. And as ever, our hardworking track services are trying to get the concrete wall put back together. They have brought with the um, uh, forklift, with the front loader, the uh, an extra, a brand new piece of concrete wall, which they're trying to straighten up. The good news in terms of us getting back to racing is that the two cars that were involved with that, PJ High, the Kelly Moss rating number 23 Porsche, and Jeff Morsing in the number 56 top racing car, they have been... Oh, no, actually, Jeff's car's still there, just going on the flatbed now. So that is still taking a wee bit of time. I 
thought we might be struggling to get back under way here and I'm, I'm not sure that we're going to have a huge amount of race left we're already down to 15 mm. and a half minutes um tomorrow another 40 minute race shay we should point that out and then yes. as far as the rest of the season is concerned some fantastic circuits for porsche to look correct porsche to looks carrera cup at north america to uh, to um, actually um, uh, visit and finish the season it's true. I mean, and we often joke about it, John, because when you think in the beginning of a year, all right, I want to go run a championship. Money is no issue. Which one am I going to choose? Mm. And then you look at all the different calendars. Well, when you look at the Porsche, the deluxe Porsche Carrera Cup North America calendar and you see that we start out at Sebring International Raceway. Yeah, that seems pretty good. Long Beach Grand Prix. Ooh, OK. I'm interested. Formula One support with the Miami Grand Prix. Oh, yeah. Yeah. For this hometown girl, that's a definite bonus. Watkins Glen. Yep. That mm -hmm. would be pretty fun in one of these cars. Road America with NASCAR. Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. I'm down. Indy for the TireRack.com Battle on the Bricks weekend. That's going to be a good one. Ren Sport for WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Seca. Yes, yes, and yes. <laughs> and then let's round out the championship again at the U.S. Grand Prix at Circuit of the Americas. Uh, yeah, I'm convinced. Is there a championship? I'm going to put this out to the collective, actually, at IMSA Radio uh, on, uh, on Twitter, or, sorry, X, as we've got to call it now. Um, it's still Twitter. It's still Twitter, isn't it? Um, <laughs> is there a championship, and you are very knowledgeable, collective, is there a championship that supports as many top line championships as Porsche Deluxe Carrera Cup North America. All right, you've got the Super Cup, Porsche Super Cup, that is pretty much all Formula One. Put that to one side. You, you are talking about IMSA, Formula One, twice, as well as NASCAR. And IndyCar. And IndyCar. Are you... I, I cannot... I cannot think of a championship that has the variety and quality of championship that it is on the same bill as. A collective, if I'm wrong, at IMSA Radio, by all means, tweet that net exit now. I'm, I'm sorry, I can't say exit. That just doesn't, <laughs> it's just not it's right, like, is it? It's but, like you're telling people to leave. Yes, that's exactly. The case, John. <laughs> exactly. And, we, and we've had enough of that in the UK, to be honest. Yeah. Um, so, all right. So... Tweet it now if you think <laughs> it's right. Meantime, Flipper is on the infield. Um, uh, thankfully not needed today because no. the rain has stayed away. So uh, we appreciate you, loyal fans, driving around with the pool accoutrement to uh, yeah. keep us dry here Excellent. in Wisconsin. Yeah, because if they had brought that, it would have rained. You know uh, that. Indubitably. Yeah. But that's how things work. Good news is that the safety crews are rolling away. The barrier that was broken is now being moved off the track and possibly being put into a retirement home. So with 12 minutes to go, we could be going back to yellow and then back to green here in the not too distant future. I'm going to say now that um, we will get back to green and I think uh, we will head... I, th I think we might get what we've we got at the moment. It's an 11th point. I think we might get seven, six minutes of racing. So that's going to be four laps. I think we'll get four laps of racing at the end of that's this. That's decent. Yeah, I'll take that. Honestly, after that kind of incident. Um, yeah. So, wow. And that is terrible news for Riley Dickinson, who is saying, no, guys, it's, it's <laughs> no, too stop bad. It. Stop Let, it. Let's just leave it. Let's just leave it. I'll um, take the points but, right now. I'll take the well, points right now. Not only the points for winning the race, of which there would be 25, so not a bad haul, but the bonus point for the fastest lap. That's also something that Riley's already earned by that first lap antic. Now he's going to have to go out there and further move the benchmark so that some of these guys chasing him in the championship can't just sneak it away. Mm -hmm. Tom Sargent would That's be a good, good candidate for that. So it's a very interesting dynamic that we now have to deal with that Efren Castro, Riley Dickinson are worried about. John Getz is going, hey, I've got the fast lap point right now. Cool. Correct. Efren Castro, John uh, Getz and uh, Kelly Moss's Riley Dickinson have the fast lap point. Shout out, by the way, right now to Kelly Moss 
uh, and the PJ Hyatt crew for the number 23, Jeff Mosing and the Top Racing 56. Those guys are not going down into Elkhart late tonight to eat at the Lakeview Dine or uh, anywhere else they are going to be at the track rebuilding those cars this evening and that yeah. is the less gam glamorous part of <laughs> motor racing and those guys and girls are going to be working really hard indeed yeah. uh, coming up later on this afternoon we've got the nascar in xfinity practice uh, from 5 ET to 7 ET, 50 minutes practice, then the qualifying for pole position. So that is coming up later on this afternoon here at, or there, at Road America. Sorry, I, when I'm watching motor racing, it doesn't matter where I am in the world watching it, I absolutely believe that I'm trackside. Hey, we're getting the engine started. Nine yep, and a half minute. minutes to go. And we are firing the flat six, four litre engines, 507 horsepower from these naturally aspirated four litre flat sixes. Absolutely tremendous sounds coming from the pit lane. And the remaining 31 cars are ready to roll. And it'll be Riley Dickinson who will lead them out behind the guards red. Porsche 992 Turbo. You can tell it's a 992 Turbo because it has the gaps in the rear wings. The yellow lights are on just in front of the rear wheels. You'll see the air intakes. That tells you it is the... I suppose in some ways top of the range, although there will be Porsche aficionados who will tell you GT3, GT3 RS, GT3 RS, Vysak perhaps stand above that. Riley Dickinson slams the left-hand door, the driver's door, getting ready to roll out. Eight and a half minutes to go. We, As I said, six minutes. We're still under full course yellow. Riley in the number 53 car has fired that four-litre flat six. What a beautiful engine. That is exactly the same engine, by the way, as is in the GT3 and GT3 Touring uh, road car. The new, GT, the new 718... Uh, Boxster and um, uh, um, I don't know what am I talking about? Cayman, sorry. 718 Boxster and Cayman RSs have had that engine as well. The Boxster has just been, or the Spider as it's called, has just been launched out in Germany. A little bit downtuned from these race cars and from the GT3 Touring, but effectively the same engine. Uh, and in terms of the GT3 992 and 992 Touring, twin wishbone front suspension, exactly the same as these race cars. You want to drive a race car on the street? Go and beg and plead and prostrate yourself in front of your local Porsche dealer and say, I want a GT3 992 or a 992 Touring. The Touring doesn't have the, the rear wing. And, and tell them that John Hindoff sent you. Yeah, that won't help at all. That'll push you to the back of the queue. <laughs> Honestly, it will push you to the back of the queue. And 507 horsepower in one of these cars on the street. Let me tell you, I know there are five, six, seven hundred horsepower cars available. It's more than adequate. More <laughs> than adequate in a car that is tuned for the racetrack and that if you are being sensible and driving within state speed limits at 65, 70, 75 miles an hour, you are still going to get mid 30s miles to the gallon. Yes, really, because Porsche are that clever in the way that they look after their engine management systems. You could get the PDK, the paddle shift cars, or in terms of GT3 and GT3 Touring, you can have a six-speed, uh, three-pedal, H-pattern manual as well. And these cars on the track are the closest you will get to those GT3 Tourings and GT3s from Porsche, uh, from Porsche Cars in North America, based in Atlanta, of course. And if you, by the way, if you get the opportunity to buy one, do the experience day either at the Porsche Experience Los Angeles or the Porsche Experience at the uh, at 
the hall of Porsche, at, at basically off the end of the runway at Atlanta Airport, yes. Uh, yeah. Absolutely so. It's always fun to look at what cars they've got on display and, and more importantly on the track as you come into the land in Atlanta. Uh, it's one of the perks of landing at Hartsfield. Um, before we get back to green, you mentioned Xfinity. I just want to say hello and good luck this weekend to our fan favorite, Catherine Legg, sports car oh, expert, yes. who is going to bat for all of us. So, Cat, make us proud in the sports car world. You will for sure. Oh, absolutely no doubt whatsoever <laughs> well i was a little bit wrong i said six minutes when we uh went to red uh we're going to come back to about five minutes of racing i still think we'll get three possibly four laps back to green flag racing for porsche uh, deluxe carrera cup north america it's nascar road america weekend and the first race and riley dickinson has jumped away at the front of the field round the outside into turn one Alex Cedric has gone off the track and a huge sideways slide by Will Martin for JTX Racing. He manages to get down the inside at turn three and take turn and uh, take position to there. Tom Sargent and Dan Clark disputing fourth, fifth and sixth with Michael Cooper. Wow. Good news from what we've heard from the infield care centre about both PJ Hyatt and Jeff Morsingshire. They have been evaluated and released, so that is the best news that we could possibly deliver for their families. As Tom Sargent and Will Martin side by side going through turn five, both of them run wide off the track, and both of them get passed by not one, but two cars. Wide again for the blue and white machine through turn five after the Corvette bridge. Oh, Riley Dickinson has cleared off from Alex Cedric. He's loving this battling behind him as he goes down into turn number eight under the Speedville Bridge into the carousel. Love this corner. If you've done it in real life or in virtual reality, such a hard corner. It just looks like a hairpin, but you've got to get the balance of the car, the speed of the entrance, the middle part, and then putting on the throttle side by side going through there. Kelly Moss, MDK, Top Racing, Nola Sports all in there at the moment, battling in the second group of cars through the kink and down towards Canada Corner at the moment. And Varunchotsky battling in 13th position is the one at the head of that second group ship. And still they're side by side as Efren Castro now has his hands full with pro cars. He's not fighting against Ford class position. He needs to be aware of this. Let the pro cars go. Let Saber Cook go and just worry about your own race, Efren, because right now it's all about the points. After that restart, Speedy Dan Clark up to P3. Will Martin drop back to fourth and big fall for Tom Sargent who went from fourth to sixth. But Dan Clark, Paul Ryan has pointed out to me and thank you, Paul. He got the champ car poll here back yes, a while ago and finished second in that race. Well, he mentioned he was a formal, uh, former open wheel racer. Uh, we will have one more uh, round of the track, one more four mile lap after this one. So it's only going to be three laps of green rather than the four I was kind of hoping for. And down towards turn five this time. <laughs> and the number 74 is on the inside. That is Jimmy Libre for MTK Motorsports. Still Efri Castro leading Pro-Am and Scott Noble leading Am, by the way, Shit. Very good effort from Scott Noble to stay ahead of Mark Lame and Jimmy Libra there just moving all the way over to driver's left to make sure that there was nowhere for Tom Sargent to even take the slightest peek. He's trying to hang on to that sixth position that he wrestled away from Sargent going through turn one this lap. Fastest lap of the race, by the way, now has changed in two of the classes. Moise Uretsky in third in Pro-Am now holds the honor. And Mark Fame wasted no time to try and get that point away from what was John Getz. He now is looking at the bumper of Scott Noble, pushing as hard as he can as Tom Sargent goes back through to sixth on Jimmy Lieber once again. Shea Adam and John Hindoff with a minute to go. We'll get one more lap. There'll be white flag next time around here at Road America for Porsche Deluxe Carrera Cup North America. As they head towards the 
final part of the lap on this newly resurfaced circuit. My goodness, what lap times we are. 2.11.0 for Riley Dickinson. He's got one and a half seconds. Can't exactly kick the clutch out of Cruz here, but this is going to be <laughs> one of his easier victories if he doesn't make any mistakes. Through in the second for Alex Sedgwick, then Dan Clark in third. This is a good race for the white, green and yellow car. Dan doing a great job. He's touring the water at the Porsche Sports Car Together Festival at, uh, at Indianapolis Motor Speedway last year and decided to come into this championship. And th it's paying off right now. I expect to see Dan do some more races next year as well. Then Will Martin, Michael Cooper for accelerating performance. Still Efren Castro in 14th leading Pro-Am. Scott Noble by about half a second in the AM category, keep an eye on that one with Mark Kawami behind him. Through turn four, under the Corvette bridge to turn five, turning left-handed for the leader. Now, can Dan Clark work this out and get somewhere close to Alex Sedgwick for second place? He's about two or three cars then, two further back. He doesn't need to, though, John. Dan Clark is looking at his first podium of the year, and if he stays, if they all stay how they are right now, which I'm not saying they will because I know this racing never does that, but he will vault from seventh in the championship, potentially up ahead of sixth, maybe even to fifth, depending on where everyone else finishes. So for Dan Clark, he doesn't need to get greedy. He just needs to be smart. Going into the last two miles of this interrupted event and what a shame we had to keep the clock running because of the other track activities here Riley Dickinson won't mind that at all he's increasing his championship lead he was talking to us on Wednesday on Midweek Motorsport on RS1 part of the Radio Show Limited network of audio and visual channels and he said I've just got to keep my head I want to be going forward to the driver shootout. That's what he's looking for at the moment. He's one of the Porsche young drivers. They've just had a, a big uh, run out at Atlanta and he comes through to take the victory here in the first of two events this weekend for Porsche Deluxe Carrera Cup North America. Through in second place for Alex Sedgwick and JTX Racing. Nola Sports Rice Nichols. Dan Clark will be on the podium. His best result of the season, Shane. It is, and it's also Sedgwick's best result of the season up into second, only his second podium finish. For Pro-Am and Efren Castro, this win is his third of the season. It is his seventh consecutive podium finish though so Efren Castro really finding form right when it counts and then Scott Noble only his second win of the season but every time he has finished a race it's been with a trophy so a very good performance from Scott Noble once again especially to hold off Mark Fame it's not the easiest thing in the world not at all so it's Riley Dickinson for Kelly Moss Racing from JDX in second, Alex Sedgwick and Dan Clark stands on the third step of the box in third. 53, 98 and 64. A pro-am winner, Efren Castro, will take it from Mark Chironi and Moise Oreski in third. And in am Scott Noble, championship leader, Mark Kwame in second from John Getz in third. The race notable for the big accident that took out DJ Hyatt and Jeff Morsing. Let's hope they are back for the second race tomorrow. Congratulations to Riley Dickinson, who takes the first one here in Porsche Deluxe Carrera Cup North America at Road America. For Shea Adam, I'm John Heidel. Bye-bye.